Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome five-time 24 Hours of Le Mans class winner and legendary Corvette racing driver, Oliver Gavin. Thank you. Good morning. What an amazing opportunity I've had to drive all three Corvette racing entries. Three generations of non-stop development between racing and production Corvette. That close connection has fueled the most successful team in endurance racing, Corvette Racing. Corvette Racing has won its class at Le Mans eight of the last 16 years. In the States, the team has won 10 series championships since 2001. And last year, Corvette won the Triple Crown, taking the checkered flag at Daytona, Sebring, and Le Mans. The C5R, the first Corvette I raced, won a Le Mans twice and helped Chevrolet produce a better sixth generation vehicle. This provided a superior foundation for the next generation race car, the C6R. That car influenced the seventh generation Corvette, which benefited directly from the race program in many ways, including aerodynamics, with the functional hood vent and rear quarter vents from the race car, Michelin tires, with the same team developing the tires for the, for the race car and the production car. And of course, the iconic small block V8, whose exhaust note separates Corvette racing from every other entry out there. The story continued with C7R, which was co-developed with the most capable production Corvette ever, the 659 horsepower supercharged Z06 which actually produces 100 more horsepower than my race car. Now Chevrolet is introducing the next chapter by paying tribute to one of Corvette's first racing successes. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the 2017 Corvette Grand Sport. Ladies and gentlemen, Chevrolet Corvette Executive Chief Engineer, Taj Yukta. Hello and welcome everyone. Oliver, it's great to see you. What do you think of our new baby, the Grand Sport? Oh, I, th I think it's fantastic, love the color, love the interior, it's awesome. Well, many of you may know Oliver has already started his racing season. He was actually behind the wheel of the number four C7R earlier this year when he took the checkered flag at the Rolex 24 Hours of Daytona. Just meters behind him was his teammate, Antonio Garcia, in the number three C7R. It was the closest finish in Daytona's history. Think about it. After 24 hours, more than 4,000 kilometers of racing, the two Corvettes were only 0.034 seconds apart. Unbelievable that you were allowed to race right to the finish. What a spectacle and unbelievable job. Oh, it was fantastic. I mean, it was full on, flat out racing, super intense. Loved every minute of it, but delighted to get the victory. You did us proud. Awesome job. Thanks, Taj. Everybody. Without a doubt, technology transfer has improved the Corvette from one generation to the next, and our long-term commitment to racing has been a major contributor to Corvette's overall success. In fact, the Grand Sport name was introduced on the racetrack when Zora Arcus Duntoff created the first Grand Sports in 1963. They were designed specifically for racing. Today, the new Grand Sport marries the naturally aspirated engine from the Corvette Stingray with this important performance technologies from the Z06. Things like aerodynamics, cooling, braking, and tires. 
The result is an incredibly capable car both on the street and on the track. The president of General Motors, Dan Ammond, and our executive vice president, Mark Royce, both very accomplished drivers in their own right, have been in this car around the Nürburgring, not a typical courtesy drive, but full speed, full tank of fuel, and when they got out, they said the car made them feel like Oliver Gavin himself. The Grand Sports powertrain is a direct injected V8 LT1, 343 kilowatts or 466 horsepower. It includes a standard dry sump oiling system, dual mode exhaust, and the most robust cooling package we've ever put in a normally aspirated Corvette. The gearbox choices are a seven speed manual with active rev matching or an eight speed paddle shift automatic. Like the C7R, the Grand Sport features a wide body design with dramatic fender flares to cover the enormous Michelin tires. We have 285 30ZR19s on the front, 335 25 20s in the back. The standard Brembo brakes include uh, extremely functional dedicated uh, air cooling ducts. Also standard is uh, magnetic uh, ride control and electronic limited slip differential and a front splitter and rear spoiler to dramatically reduce lift. And for the first time, the Grand Sport will be available with our Z07 package, which introduces carbon ceramic brakes and Michelin Pilot Sport 2 cup tires. Also available is the most extreme aerodynamic package with larger front splitter and a very big rear spoiler to give us true aerodynamic downforce and awesome performance on the track. Very benign handling, and maximum cornering Gs of up to 1.2, we've measured. Acceleration is equally impressive, zero to 100 kilometers an hour in just 3.9 seconds. In fact, this car on our Milford test track back home in Michigan is only six tenths of a second behind the lap record set by the previous generation ZR1. That's an incredible benchmark given that the ZR1 has a nearly 130 kilowatt or 180 horsepower advantage over the Grand Sport. The Grand Sport is going to be available in the United States this summer and in Europe this fall. And it will be available in both coupe and convertible body styles. There will be a big range of personalization options, including five stripe packages, fender hash marks, and six different color choices. This model that we're showing here is called the Grand Sport Collector Edition. It features Watkins Glen gray metallic paint with tension blue, blue hash marks, and full length uh, black stripes. The inside is really nice. It's wrapped in exclusive tension blue leather and suede. Before you come up and take a closer look at the Grand Sport, I have two other announcements. First, Chevrolet is bringing the all new 2016 Camaro to Europe. The sixth generation Camaro provides a faster, more nimble driving experience enabled by a new, lighter architecture. It's at least 90 kilograms or 200 pounds lighter than the previous generation. There'll be a broad powertrain range. It'll be available with a turbocharged two liter engine with an eight speed automatic, or a 6.2 liter LT1 V8 with a six speed manual or an eight speed automatic. Today we are announcing that the base price of the Camaro will be 39,900 euros and it will be available in Europe in June of this year. Second, Geneva marks the European debut of the Camaro convertible, which will go on sale in Europe later this year. It will be the only convertible in the segment to offer fully automatic operation with a hard tonneau cover, the capability of opening and closing at speeds up to 50 kilometers an hour or 30 miles an hour, and you can remotely op operate the top uh, with the key fob. Ladies and gentlemen, before I let you come up and take a closer look, I'd like to introduce a few members of the Corvette team who are here, traveled with us to be here with you today, and will be joining us on stage. First is Harlan Charles, our product marketing manager. <laughs> Next to him, Ryan Vaughn, who is the director of interior design. And then finally, Vice President of Global Design, Ed Welburn. Thanks for being here, Ed. So now I'd like you all to uh, come up and take a closer look at the 2017 Corvette Grand Sport. 